five, you could pick, I think, an offlane Lycan you can play on more tempo. You mm -hmm. could put the DP offlane with the tiny. Let's see what material would I want. I think someone else that you can play through in a slightly more aggressive manner could work. I mean, they could even put the tiny mid. Honestly, with how many options they have, it's a little hard for me to call a specific hero. But I would mm -hmm. like for them to play on the side of tempo, because that's what these heroes kind of want to do. Your Natures wants to do it, your DP wants to do it, and that's also how you can heavily abuse like these Drow and Zeus-type heroes, because they don't really protect each other at all in this early game. Like, when you get Dove, they're not really going to respond too well to each other when this move is going to come in, which, you know, Ivy should be going for at six, seven minutes in this game. Mm. I'd love to see Ember Spirit personally, but let's see what is Morbay going to be playing here between the Death Prophet or some other hero. And uh, then with the CK. All right. So they're actually well, going to be putting this Nature's Prophet into the offlane. Yeah. Owned me Nature's Prophet. Morbay yeah. plays the DP and PO okay. on the CK. All right. Um, you did mention, Kezu, that this was a very versatile draft and they could go for very various options. Do you like the option that they ended up going for here with the CK at the end? Yeah, I think that should work. The top lane should be good. You have Natures into Drow. Bottom lane, all these like heroes that have stun and a slow or minus armor is pretty annoying for Centaur to deal with. You also have a Snap, which pairs up pretty well there. So, yeah, I would say I, I like the tempo for Ivy. I do think that Ball did a way better job in this game than they did in the last one. So, they definitely have playing option. This is, this is not going to be a stomp. And what do you think about the draft here on the side of Team Baldur Born here, Tika? Have they given themselves the tools necessary to push us to a deciding Game 3? It's a very standard looking draft. The, the lanes should be pretty decent. They should be able to find farm, which means they can find opportunities to play out their draft. Um, I just think this Nature's Profit could be very good for the, the other side, or in the offlane. And um, uh, I think this offlane could be a bit volatile, like CK into Centaur and stuff. like. We can see some a lot of fights going on, so yeah. volatility is in the game, but overall board have gr vastly improved their game on draft to this draft. Well, whenever Bald is a bit more volatile, these games tend to be a lot more entertaining, but crucially, they stand to have a much better chance of actually winning out that contest. We'll be seeing whether or not Team Bald Reborn can ride that wave of volatility, or if Ivy will utilize their draft to cruise to a 2-0 victory. To find out, we send it over to our wonderful casting duo. We have the outstanding, the original, and not mistaken, OD Pixel being joined by the terrific Trent. Gentlemen, take it away for game number two. Thank you very much, Snail. Yes, looking forward to this one. We had a, a bit of a stomp in Game 1, Trent. Now looking at these drafts mm. for Game 2, coming into this second game of Ivy versus Team Bod. Are we going to get a closer game? I mean, are, are there things this time around that you, you like about Team Bod's draft? Oh, yeah. 100% oh, yeah. closer game because this game got out of control last time because of the lanes, and we got the Never Leave Lane as 5 hero himself. Well, sort of. Uh, you know, the, the Undying. That's the goal. That's where you want to be, okay? It's not an AA, it's an Undyne. Absolutely, yeah, we'll see. You know, that was a rough, rough lane indeed there for, for, for the two of them in that game one. You can definitely expect to see better things from Bengen and Gorg here in this game too. Already though, Ivy, they're the ones looking for action. Uh, coming in from the high ground, but Team Bold, pretty prepared, holding around their tier one tower. Not going to get caught out by that. I feel like... Um... Power 65 was just like, yeah, I think I actually want to like play a game as CK. So he felt like picking that up again. And Cube, I mean, you can't blame Cube one to go back on the Tiny. So this will be a uh, an excellent showcase of the power of Tiny. Or maybe better yet, the power of Undying. Just to show, you know, uh, maybe why spamming... <laughs> Speaking of spamming, spamming voice lines. And that's why sometimes you can run the problem spamming one hero all the time. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how Cube does in comparison, because this should be significantly worse for him. Let's have a look. I mean, this top lane still, you know, yeah. It's if Bengen can sort of just slam down the decays and, and sort of keep the lane in a state where Cube's not able to get the toss back threat onto Gorg, then Gorg should definitely have a much more comfortable time hitting the creeps here. In the landing stage, uh, look at look at some of the other lanes and the the, the the picks that we ended up on. I mean, the the Zeus coming out from Weehar, did you sort of like that that way of Team Bold ending their draft? You, you feel sort of the Zeus provides something that they were missing from their lineup? I think it's a uh, it's a nice juicy bit of damage to just try and help like move things along, you know, in, in the early game. 
and a little bit into that mid game. Uh, obviously, the uh, the heavenly jump has changed a lot about this hero. It feels like you can be quite a bit more active while also not exposing yourself to too much danger. So that'll be the goal for Weeha is uh, trying to be involved without uh, accidentally slowing down his own farm. But speaking of farm, you know, obviously not nearly as reliable as someone like the Keeper of Light. So Weeha will be a little bit more dependent on his side lanes to keep things going. You can't just retreat to the jungle and do a bunch of stacks. And uh, we'll see how that goes for him. And then, of course, down bottom, we'll have Pablo on his signature Rubik backing up Zip Zapper's Centaur. As you mentioned, PS65 again on the CK. Uh, with the backup of JM Snapfire this time round. And, uh, I mean, this bottom lane, uh, both teams have got a bit of potential to fight down here. A bit of battling uh, already kicking off. Yeah, very tanky heroes around, though. I mean, Pablo, obviously the weakest of, of the four. Hey, nice moves, though. Dodges the cookie to stay alive. So he will be the uh, the main person who gets just harassed down here, I imagine. Seen on the, the CSO far up top. Indeed, a, a very nice start for, for Gold this time around. Eight for four. Getting to farm very nicely here, thanks to banging on the Undying. And uh, Oni has already done the TP back home and back to the lane as well here. So, we well, yeah, I guess a courier kill there. Didn't even have to use the heavenly jump. Just caught uh, caught him in the river, slipping a little bit there. Uh, he's still slightly losing out in the CS compared to Mobile and the Death Prophet. Having a bit of a better lane so far. It still feels weird to see just how much damage Zeus has to right click now. That's yeah, massive, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's such a big difference compared to the way he used to be. He used to be like so reliant on arc lightning. Not to say it's not still useful, but at least you have chances now to last sit by yourself. But uh, yeah, I've always been great. Lots of denies. Uh, really pressuring under that tower as you obviously you're very confident as Death Prophet, especially when you have uh, level 2 Spirit Siphon. So if we however does use that jump, that could be the instant go for him. And Pablo, look at that damage. Oh, yeah, so Nice cookie setup, um, but not enough to quite bring down Bad Blood. Ru Rubik having the the salve of the ready. Of course, at this stage, Zip Zapper has managed to get the Ring of Health, so won't be too easy to harass out of the lane. And Pablo's just like, well, I, I can't really be here, so I'll, I'll just go get the runes. Just, just live, please. And, well, that might have been a bit too tough. There's still a cookie here, so. When he, he does indeed try his best to juke it, but uh, won't be able to survive. So a uh, well-executed kill there from Ivy. Uh, able to battle through the early regen that the ring provided. And still get that kill. First blood for Ivy once again here in this game, too. Cube here is... Uh... Maybe setting up for something here on the Gork as well. I uh, know, he'll just cover some last hits. I, I thought he was angling for a tree cut play there, but they don't have the most damage this early, of course. So, better to just uh, try and secure the farm. Don't do anything too wild. Mid lane, we've seen a little bit of pressure from the, uh, the Siphons into an instant jump. There's another one. They could try and make a play doing that with Cube. Speaking of which, he gets a toss up top, but it's just to send back Fengen. Never mind. I'm right back under that tower. Kind of interesting that Cube hasn't been trying any sort of uh, lane manipulation either. Right? He's not like trying to pull the waves or anything like that. They're just kind of happy with this situation. They don't really want to like draw it all the way back. He doesn't want to take the risks. Obviously, uh, Undying is pretty annoying to do that versus he doesn't have boots yet either on the tiny. So then you have to rely on tossing back the Undying. He's kind of just saying, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just going to deward my camp and uh, and see if I can work from there. Oh, bottom. Another nice cookie play here for JM. Sets up for the two man stun and will allow them to take out Zip Zapper again. So, really being able to punish this centaur in the lane. Paula's going to be careful as well because Jim and is almost level four here. It's just 12 XP shy. That's going to be a lot of damage. Obviously, with the, uh, the ability to uh, the pull and stun as well from the ZK, it's a lot of chain damage. They're going to drop the tomb. So, Cube catch the two of them quite nicely with the avalanche, and that will 
need to allow them to hold Gorg far, far enough back that the multi shot only gets a couple of connections in. So it keeps more than fine. Bottom lane zip zapper. He's come back down here. He's, he's in trouble again. This looks to be maybe another death for him. We'll see the telekinesis from Pablo. Buy him a bit of, a bit of space. Who stomp as well? We'll have back PO65, but uh, yeah, very much feeling the pain down here. Zip Zapper getting heavily bullied. It's a good thing that Zeus is on his team right now, that's for sure. As uh, we did get the uh, the regen rune up top, unfortunately, as uh, Team Ball did go to cover bottom with uh, with support assistance, but was given over to Mobe, so he's going to grab that. Pop his exorcism, and he may be low mana now, but he's sitting with a, a full gas tank there ready to go here whenever he desires. That's a, uh, yep, <laughs> yep, that's all I will go with. Always going to feel nice getting that earliest kill with the Thunder God's Wrath. So, unless he may be able to get those global kills, he's very much struggling to protect the tower. Good amount of damage here done by Mobile with the first round of Exorcism. Won't quite kill it, but, uh, so, well, maybe it will actually. Uh, he, 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 might. Yeah, he will. Uh, he's going to get it with the Siege Creep. So first exo, seven minutes in, tier one tower's taken. Uh, and you know, Zeus a hero, which you know, maybe they had picked with sort of the hope that they'd be able to spam out and push back against the Death Prophet. It, it's not worked out for Weeha. He still lost his tower very, very early. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna put, uh, this next power rune means that it'll be in like the window of the exorcism coming back up. So if they manage to secure that, for Moby again, is obviously game one, you know, you get every single rune, feels really nice, you start thinking about game two. He says, I don't even need the rune, let's just run at them. Like, what, what are we waiting for here? He said they're waiting for Gork to come back. Oh, there he is. See how well they can uh, prepare to deal with this dive that's going to be coming in from Ivy. There's the toss for Q. Two-man avalanche, the tombstone will get dropped down. Gork able to push back the two of them with the gust. See if they can continue to chase. Mobile trying to stay on top of Gorg. Gets another siphon off. The crit swarm won't the quite, tree. quite click it, flip him. So Gorg's going to be fine. The tower, on the other hand, it may not be. The pressure's coming in here with the tree and south. As this looks to be, you know, eight minutes in. Some real fast and early pressure here from Ivy. They're not necessarily getting the kills as they did in the last game, but they're, they're certainly taking the towers in a similar fashion. Cube has no boots. He's just running in this drow with windlays, <laughs> waving Gorg out of his jungle. Uh, they do grab kill down bottom though. Much needed. Ancient Vincento here. And now on to power 65. I want to try and threaten him, but at the same time, they've got to respect the fact that he has the six. Phantasm is there. And maybe further back up, TPing in. Zip Zap is still going to try and sweep through the though. trees, but yeah, power 65, he's out. Oh, yeah, nothing. Uh, they are going to see where he TP'd because of their uh, aggressive ward. That they're also going to see the TP in from Jim Vincento. So they can start uh, hitting this tower with quite a bit of confidence, knowing that they're not rotating over. Jim Vincento does get the read on that, though, and finds the D ward. So two rings and a Vanguard here, keeping Zip Zapper uh, a little bit tankier. And Gork, he's just trying to find some place to farm. You know, I see him running back and forth, trying to figure out where to go. And all he's got is a creep wave of the tier two. We'll see how strong Ivy feel when it comes to pressuring these tier twos. Exorcism's back up for Mobile, so could be looking for his next objective. See if Cooper's able to get some Let's sort of toss back because yeah, Jam's coming over. The two supports looking to try and make life hard here for Gorg. And Gorg's out. And keep a safe distance. See over in the river. Weeha quick heavily jump to the high ground. Just in time before they are able to completely control him. Even though the power room control is in Ivy's favor, Mobite able to grab up an illusion room. Well, the Tome is coming up for Cube. They're going to have six soon as well on Jimintento. He's up top grabbing that uh, that wave of XP. Looks like Omni's handing it off to him intentionally there. Making sure he'll have that ulti. So they're going to have uh, Kisses as well as Wrath of Nature. So lots of burst damage available for a potential turnaround here. Oh, he doesn't have the Kisses quite yet, actually. And he's going to walk into the two of them. He'll get very quickly taken out. Did manage to get the cookie off, though, with his dying breath. Let's see if that's going to be enough to set up for anything. As, uh, TP in. Let's close the gap. Owned me. Trying to see if they can still get something out of this. The Stampede from Zip Zapper. 
Won't get Pablo out in time. Mopai is still able to clip him with the Crypt Swarm. And in fact, continues to just run down Weehar all the way back towards his Tier 3 tower. Well, there is an exorcism here if they want to pop it. Might not even be necessary. I mean, he has just nuked the entire wave. I don't really think you have to. You could actually just use this for Roche if you desire. Uh, I don't really see them having a good chance of contesting you over there. I mean, it would be a little bit rushed to just like immediately run at Roche. It would be a little bit unnecessary, but options are there if you really want to utilize the full uh, like momentum and just like keep cascading these effects here from the DP. I mean, yeah, this is this is so such early towers. Tier 2 gone 11 minutes in. I mean, last game, we, we saw we thought the Tier 2 going down was fast. That was a 15. This is 11 minutes this time around. See Team Bolt trying to stop, hold their ground here for a fight. They're trying to get on top of Mobite. Siphons are off. Can they burst through this Death Prophet? They can. They'll finally put an end to Mobite. Take the Death Prophet off the map. See if they can yeah, catch Pablo still has as well. the Stolen Avalanche. They should be able to get him it. Connection from the slow of the arrows of Gorg sets up for the burst of Pablo and we are to come in. So they'll lose their tier two, but they are able to uh, at least take some kills here as Ivy's forced to retreat from uh, being on Team Bolt's half of the map. That was a, a nice uh, nice punish. A little overextension here. Ivy kind of playing like game one, I would say, you know, as if they had an 11k lead. It's not quite that big, you know, got to relax a little bit here. And Weehaw, what a turnaround here. Help him get a couple kills. Now he's going to grab the regen rune. Game's looking a lot better. I mean, they're feeling strong. They're heading straight into the jungle of Ivy, Team Bolt. They want to try and get more. They've got to respect the fact that Ivy's going to have heroes pretty much ready to react to this pretty shortly. They're looking at what's PS65. They're actually going to pop the stampede, but that is not going to be a move that they're able to make there. PS65 under the tier 2 and with his armlet. Just a bit too much of a target to dive for. So stampede used yeah. to no avail there. They don't want to make the same mistake that they just saw Ivy do up top. Because it looks tempting. You stampede into Avalanche, toss back, maybe drop a Tombstone. But the TP's coming through uh, both to the Tier 2 as well as the Nature's Prophet plus the Wrath of Nature. Like, there is a lot of potential turnaround damage here. So you don't want to make that same mistake you just watch your opponents make. Four Staff done here as well. I love that choice here from Mobe. That is really nice. Feels great versus the Centaur, even versus like the Zeus and the Undying, just that like little bit of space, either trying to get away or to close the gap for the Spirit Siphon. It's really helpful. So here the odds provided by our betting partner, esportsbet.io. As uh, once again, feeling Ivy have the upper hand this game. And uh, so far, certainly feels like that, but not quite the same way as they did in game one. As Team Bold this time round, definitely with potential to punch back. Mm -hmm. Zip Zapper, though. Might be going down. The three of them. They'll dance around him. And they have the stun. And with that, Zip Zapper, no way out. Another kill here for the carry, Pyro 65. Getting very close you know. there. In fact, Jay's yeah, got it done. So Armlet Egg Echo complete here, 14 minutes in. CK is not an easy hero to battle into. Interestingly enough, Dota Plus disagrees. You know, it's, it's got 60% for Team Bald right now. Well, uh, despite all this oh, gold for that. Ivy. Oh, there yeah, you go. It was higher. It was at 65% just a, a minute ago. So it's turning fast. It's realizing <laughs> the error of its ways. But I mean, there there is some merit to that, I'd say, in right. just the uh, the power of the Drow. But a lot of that, I, I'm assuming, condition of them. doing well is grabbing that tier one mid and like going to Roche sooner rather than later. The, the longer this stalls out and they're just not getting that pressure, the, the faster this should shift harder and harder in Ivy's favor. As you can see, it's already like 50-50 at this point. Faith is falling fast from Dota Plus. We are. Look at the stampede off. Ail up for the TP out, but the damage has been done. As we are gone. JM stepping up the high ground. They'll see if they can burst through the snap fire. Who's stomped to set up? Should be able to get it. So, team Bolt, they'll get the trade. I think they know about the tombstone. I mean, I, I just keep saying go Roche. It just looks like a good time to go Roche, but. They're, they're just content.
Yeah, this Orchid, though, is going to be a big problem. Because they just have nothing to deal with that right now on the side of the Dire. They basically just have uh, Stampede, right? That's their save. Uh, see the Stolen Kisses coming out here from Pablo. Not quite enough lockdown to sort of set up for, for the connection on the front of it all. And Pablo will try for the TP out. He's not making it away. Neva Zip Zapper. His Pablo 65 and Mobi run him down. Three kills for them on the board. And uh, yeah, the Exorcism is at the ready. A little on the mana from Mobi. So surely have enough for it if they want to commit <laughs> onto an objective. Yeah, every time I look at him, he's out of mana. Oh, take it. Wrap around here, Q. Avalanche into the Josh back, Gorg. He cannot separate himself from them there as the, the gap is closed. Forced oh, behind there by that control from Cube. The wraparound behind the tower. PO65 looking for Bengen. Good as Phantasm cleared out very quickly there by the AoE of Queen Heart Zeus. It's now going go with a jump, and in fact, they'll be able to punish him. They take down the CK. So once again, this time around in this game two, Team Bold very much showing that they can punish these. These aggressive moves from Ivy, they're going to look for more. Stampede in an attempt to close the gap on Own Me. They're in with the hoof stomp, but at the same time, Cube and Mobi, they're in onto Weehar down the mid. They've taken out the Zeus, and now they've taken out Bengen as well. Toss forward from Cube, sets up for another, and he will die to Gorg. As still with the three remaining members of Team Bold, they're doing a good job of, of getting some of these kills in return, making sure that, you know, that in, in these sort of bits of action, it's not a complete win for Ivy. Team Bolt getting, a, a, in fact, a bit of an edge there with the XP and gold. Yeah, Gork's getting his revenge here after being hunted and stalked for the past two games by Cube. Grabbing a kill on him there. Oh. And <laughs> his inventory, I don't think, has changed since the last game. <laughs> I think this is about where he wound up on Drow. <laughs> no shard, though, so, you know, he, he is looking even better. Absolutely, and only the one death so far this game on Gorg. So, feeling in a, a million times a better spot this time around. 12 to 10, still 4k advantage for Ivy. I see Team Bowl go for the smoke up. See if they can find their way on top of one of the cores. Maybe owned me on his own at the moment in the jungle. Could be a, a nice jump for them here. Oh, that'd be so good for them. They have the arcane room popped on Zeus as well, but they, they don't quite have the reach. He seems seems aware that that sort of move was to be coming in. Heads back and make sure that he's not in a spot that Team Bold are able to capitalize on. And uh, now the Treant's fanning out, scouting. This could give them the ability to rush if they want. Uh, and they're just like taking the outpost. Yep, easy control, and, and in we go. So definitely one of the best parts about Nature's Prophet. It's just uh, fanning out those trance, getting the vision. So they're, they're probably going to know it's being contested. They sort of had a, a ward down bottom. Now they don't see anyone. If they're paying attention mid, which I'm sure someone is, they see them clearing the wave. But they don't have the, uh, the ability to really do anything about this. So if they want to try and go for mobiles as ult comes to an end. So they do have a good high ground vision around here, Team Bold, with the cliff forward. And they, they will try and make something happen with it. They're closing in. They'll get the grab onto Q. Big burst to take down the Tiny. Meanwhile, though, JM laying down the kisses, forcing Team Bold to back right off. PO65, he's got the control and locked down onto Weeha. Finds the Zeus at the front of the fight. Taking out a fair bit of the damage potential team bot, but they do still have Gorg around to provide some extra firepower. And with that damage, they'll bring down Pyo 65 to once. Only TP's over, ready to see if he can try and protect his carry. And, uh, oh, Zip Zapper, he's actually going to find the opportunity to get in and get the jump onto own me, as well as Pyo 65 there, allowing them to take down the Prophet. See if they can chase for more, but Ivy, as a unit, they will back off. So Ooh. again, Team Bold finding some, some good action and Gorg also getting to join into some of these fights. And perhaps most importantly, Pablo's living coming out of that fight and has like that extra nuke. He's got the Scatter Blast, so now if you smoke up, you know, you can, maybe you can wait till the Stampede's back if you want to, but if you want to get a little bit aggressive here, you've got a good chance to uh, to make a play happen. Get that Scatter Blast into Fade Bolt nuke, perhaps you grab a Crypt Storm right, at, right after, and you individually can do like, you know, seven, 800 damage. That's the kind of play that they need from Pablo right now. And obviously in their last crazy game, 
Uh, Pablo was was a huge cornerstone uh, of trying to make things happen. Uh, they didn't end up getting the win, but he looked so good that uh, he needs to channel all that energy here if they want to keep this series alive. Let's see, they're going to be able to make a move towards. Oh, it means very close to having the BKB, so soon it'll be much harder to catch and burst the profit. Focusing on getting there, the BKB's done pretty much around the around the team here, Ivy. Pyro 65 also wanting to have his done before the next fight. To get caught out by this heavy magical burst that we've seen Team Bob be able to threat threaten kills with. Yeah. Just playing a little bit safe here. They, I'm sure they're well aware they don't have this giant lead in the previous got. game. Ooh, that that triant. If they're paying attention, it is scouting a lot of stuff right now with this smoke. It might be hard to catch Ivy by surprise with that. As Cube's the only one that's hovering around this area. And even then, he's going to be quick Ooh. with a blink. He was ready for that one. Immediately out. We'll see JM being looked towards, but he's into the pit. Goes to the TP out. Sip Zapper. He'll also be able to join him in there. Jumps in. Who stomp puts an end to his escape. Team Bold, they'll get a kill out of this. It's sad when they get a kill, but you still see the net worth has been going up for Ivy. You know, the lead, just because you know, they have so many heroes farming. You're running around as a group. They're very efficient at clearing through these camps right now as well. But they claw a little bit back there with that gank. They establish some some territory for themselves. And uh, what, what kind of items are they going to look for? I mean, we got these BKBs coming on the Radiant. They're trying to get a defensive Lotus Orb here, but it looks a bit on Zip Zapper. Just to uh, assist versus this Orchid. Ooh, well, it's just undying. It's fine. That's his job. Seuss lives. Pyro 65 tries to get oh, the ground back in. Nice. And does force out the BKB from Pyro 65. That Thunder God's Wrath. Pyro 65 having to pop it to stay alive there. Is very much living on the edge trying to threaten We Are Zeus. That's actually crazy. I can't believe he waited that long to pop that BKB. See, BKB is now done as well for Owned Me. So. Fights definitely getting a little harder for Team Bold. Uh, the way they rely on taking the, the kills with this mid Zeus. Weeha is trying to get in towards this E Blade to boost up his damage and uh, give himself a bit of a, a defensive mechanism as well, of course. But uh, Mobe just uh, so so tanky. Has the Kai Assange, the Force Staff. They have some trouble already just like initiating fights. Like, there have been moments where maybe Team Ball could do something, but unless they burn the Stampede and the Centaur Blink, it's pretty hard to just like get in right now. And so anyone who's able to kite these fights a little bit here for Ivy just makes that initiation so much worse. But there you go. Centaur is consistently finding a, a nice target in that Snapfire. Being good with the jumps here, Zip Zapper. Had a bit of a tough time in the lane, but very much being the setup that Team Bob require at this point. 14 for 14. Still this 5k lead for Ivy. <laughs> Feels like they're just kind of uh, abusing the uh, like lack of of burst like the easy the easy like uh kill potential that you sometimes think you're gonna have with the zeus i mean again it's the same situation where they go across the map they move they grab this kill and snap fire and then nothing really changes and right, now we have bkb and mage slayer just sitting here for five and there's a grab so can get out of this he he might just be able to quick blink there before any instance of damage came in i'll get caught by the silent zip zapper but that's no worry to him at all. He's able to walk off the attempts there at the full lineup of Ivy. As the, the five of them came in towards the jungle of Team Pollard to try and look for some action. Pyro 65 will show himself in the mid. Team Pollard, and he's still there. Maybe he was thinking if they could try and go for the attempt onto Pyro 65, or at least force out a BKB. The rest of Ivy now swing across behind him. Another smoke up here. 
Keep looking for that blink jump in combination with the kisses here from Jim Vincento. As the gem picked up now as well, so they're going to look to close in this map on Team Bald. Only a level 11 half though, so uh, not the, the most damage from the kisses yet. Oh. Uh, they're going to make the jump on a Weeha, but Zipzap is ready to help him out, won't manage to get him out. Even with a stampede, Weeha still gets caught by the damage of Bio 65, and now down the mid they got Own Me into the high ground here with the TP of the BKB, stands his ground, takes out Pablo with the help of Cube's damage inside the base, and they'll be able to force out the fortification. Double buybacks coming out as well, straight away from Team Bold here. Pablo and Zip Zapper. So quite a, 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 an economic victory there for Ivy, continuing to pump up their lead. See if they can maybe find more cube tries for the toss back. He will get it. Uh, but it, in fact, Zip Zapper, he's got to go and find himself a three man hoost stop. Looks very fancy. Uh, but as it is, there was no follow up. A three man hoost stop that they weren't able to do anything with their team bold as a unit. As Ivy, they'll actually make it out with everybody alive. Pablo's trying to find something. Oh, they oh. pulled the Zeus ult, but nobody low enough to get taken out by it with how well Ivy was able to retreat from that one. Honestly, a bit, a bit of a miracle, really, that Ivy didn't lose anyone there, but they very nicely back away and keep all alive. <laughs> Pablo is doing his best here with his little floating cubes. Going to go put his own counter pressure of, uh, of Treants in this bottom lane. All right, so overall, I mean, they get the tier two mid. They don't end up losing a Rax, which is great news for Team Ball, because I think that was definitely possible in that fight. Uh, obviously, they had to buy back for it, but that's well worth it. And uh, Pablo, I wonder if he goes for a shard now. I wonder, is, like, is that useful enough for this next fight? I feel like he is going to have a hard time waiting for his blink, as nice as the blink would be. I feel like just getting Shard might be the play to try and reposition Weeha and Gork and, and actually get them involved a little bit more in these engagements. Especially with Weeha's E-Blade, you know? If you double up on the save, it can really help with the value. So, yeah, he does queue up the Shard now. I like that a lot. And team ball. Also good if you get Cookie. Yeah, there's, there's indeed some, some nice Shard spells Dyer's that you can use to his own benefit. So Ivy's next move is holding this position and both teams sort of mirroring one <laughs> another on the opposite halves of the map. I can I can tell you what I want them to do if you want to know. And what's the next move? Oh, you got to get that Roche, baby. All right, so the reason why I talk about Roche a billion times this game is because, number one, Death Prophet, uh, you know, Exorcism, obviously, amazing spell. Kind of annoying versus this lineup, I would say, on Team Bald because unless Team Bald drop Tombstone, they don't really want to establish a fight. So, Exorcism to me is just this like, progress the game spell, because you can just go to a tower or Roche and they don't stampede away, you know? Of course, right now you're so strong you don't even use Exorcism, so that's great. But, uh, yeah, it looks like they'll just scout it out. Obviously with Nature's Prophet, you always get Roche on the spawn, as long as you have some semblance of knowledge about uh, when it's going to be spawning. You just send in some Treants, keep an eye on it, and that's going to make it real easy to get the Shard. Oh, who are we handling this to? I, I like the CK. Oh, I CK like the DP. Nice, yeah. Oh, DP. Nah, that's fair. Oh, so CK is kind of like, it's more fun. I like the little illusion, but Fear's good too. We'll see how hard they want to try and push down one of these lanes with the Aegis snap. Uh, team Bold, they're able to get this bottom lane pushed all the way back over uh, with the stolen treants. Pablo will start to tickle onto the tier three, force back at least some sort of reaction from Ivy. Will be owned me. That heads back to deal with a little bit of pressure being applied. for Ivy, it's not going to be too easy for them to approach the high ground. Team Bold with mm -hmm. some some decent heroes uh, shoving back against any high ground attempt. Yeah, it is an interesting one, because on the one hand, you're like, alright, they have Exorcism, so that's great for pushing, as they do grab Zip Zapper here, and they have a lot of damage and guaranteed chainstun there. So that's easy. 
But uh, it's the constant nuking from the Zeus. Like, Weehaw got the early shard. Uh, he has the E-Blade. He also has a assemblable Aeon disc right now. So he'll be pretty well protected. And it, if your approach isn't perfect, you know, it, it feels like you're going to have to just overcommit and jump. So what we'll probably see is Onmi doing a aggressive TP into the base, similar to what he did uh, when they took the Tier 2 mid. He'll just pop his BKB, look for a decent Orchid, and set up Vision for Pile 65 to hop in and try and grab Weehaw. That, that would be the goal, I would think. And then that's going to put the pressure on Pablo to try and get this Telekinesis throwback and save. Tombstones, four staff, soul rips. Everyone just has to look towards Weeha to try and back him out of this fight. Very much feels that Ivy, they do really respect that there's going to be that potential from Team Bold on the high ground. Not going to look to commit straight away for the push, working towards getting the, the next few major items online. The heroes. And, uh, yeah, good old Dota Plus. Still give a solid 30% shot. It, uh, it comes down to essentially just mistakes from Ivy. Maybe it's not so much mistakes as it is, uh, again, the difficulty of like securing that, that grab onto the Zeus or the Drow with all the uh, the disengage that they have offered up to them here. Fighting on the high ground is really just not that advantageous to them. I'd like to see a, a Scotty from, yeah, from Pyle. Yeah, he's going to buy that next. I think he just gets Scotty. He feels even scarier. That feels really good going high ground. Omi has the Gleipnir. Yeah, oh, I, I really like the Blast Rig as well. I think that's a good choice for, for Omi here too. I just don't want to see him get blown up right away if he TPs in the middle. Managed to start the fight here as they look towards Cube, but uh, not able to get the burst off. As Cube's going to be fine, able to turn the combo onto Zip Zapper, and it's actually Zip Zapper that ends up in trouble after trying to start the fight with that jump. He goes down, she banging on the retreat, but only TP's in, and managed to clean him up as well. So both heroes taken down there from Team Pod. They try and look for that fight outside of the base, but does not go as they would have hoped. And Weeha just clears one more wave before TPing home. Not really much Onmi is going to be able to do about that. And Pablo. Oh, no, Pablo. Cute. In with the toss back. That's going to be a third down. Pyre 65 thinking about committing him with the BKB, but Gorge does his own BKB. Pyre 65 is going to hop with the TP out. With the remainder of the BKB duration, he will manage to safely retreat. Team Bolt, <laughs> they are able to hold the high ground and push back Ivy. So the age is expiring in less than a minute. Unlikely that Ivy is going to be able to make that attempt again with that. They lose a few heroes here and there, but very much showing that they do have the power to hold the base and, and make this game a rather difficult one for Ivy to close up despite their lead. That's actually just so... Uh, it's such a support mentality of Cube there, where he just knows that like Pablo is going to come forward. Because they know Pablo had Crypt Swarm because he got out of the last fight and he, he popped it a few times. So every Rubik player is going to do the same thing there, right? They're going to run towards that wave. They're going to try and Crypt Swarm and Fade Bolt it to try and clear it, and just as it's approaching, Cube just jumps back there, you know? Just, he makes it so easy for the team. And uh, forces them to uh, to respond there, so. Uh, he does have his buyback now. It has ticked back into timer, so that's good news for them. Same thing with Zip Zapper. So at least it won't be uh, timelines holding them back on the side team ball with the buybacks. We'll just be gold. I mean, at this point as well, I mean, do you, do you think Ivy would just wait out for the next Roshan? <laughs> well, you know, it looks like a pretty good idea. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. It's not fun going high ground. The one way you lose is a bad high ground. That That is it. Like, them fighting out on the map just does not look good for Team Bald. I think the odds of them being able to burst down more than one of your heroes, even if they get, like, this perfect jump, it feels like they can kill one of your heroes and everyone else just gets away. So... Fights inside the map, very unlikely to be econ like economically advantageous for Team Bald. Fights on their high ground, very likely to go poorly for you. They can abuse their buyback. They, they've got tons of wave clear, which puts you in an awkward position. It forces you to do a bad jump. Why would I want to do that without a second free life, you know? And the next upgrade of items, too, is just massive for what they want to do. Getting a Scythe on the Death Prophet, getting the AC on the Nature's Prophet. It, it just makes everything easier by a factor, so... 
No point going in deep. And Cube has an Octarine core. That is gross. With Quickening Jam. Ooh, seven second toss. That's a, that's a lot to play with. As long as he can survive in these fights, of course. You know, just, you know going all in on the, the Octarine rush means that you know, he won't have too much protection. Once he's in, he's in. Check out Gork, though. Got the butterfly done. Gotta say, he's doing a great job farming this game. 304 last hits. Only person ahead of him is the Nature's Prophet. And uh, that, yeah, that's some quality evasion right now. Not a lot of choices versus that. Oh, Gone for the smoke, Ivy. See if they can get into the triangle. Whoa, Gork, slow down, man. Look at look at those forearms. Oh, you know, that's a guy who's he's clicking creeps. Zip Tap is gonna try and start things. Him and the stun, we see Pi 65 go straight towards Gorg, but Gorg pops the BKB, tries to keep his distance from him, but Pi 65 can, continues to stay on top. They will manage to slide Gorg down to the low ground, but that means Weeha gets left behind. You see them turn towards Mobile Gorg, doing the damage here, bringing it. Mobile down low, and they'll be able to burst him. They take down the Death Prophet. Now they can try to look for more. It's three dead on IV. Pi 65, Woo! he's gone as well. They'll take out the Foral. As oh. Ivy struggling in the fight, and of course, Team Bolt, they did use the buyback on Weeha, but even with that taken account for, absolutely a huge win there for Team Bold. And you know, as oh, we very much they... sense, it's it, it's hard for Ivy to take these fights. That was outside of the base, though. So Team Bold able to sort of beat Ivy at their own game. And considering the lead that Ivy have, if they're not winning the fights on the high ground attempt, and they're now losing the fights as well out on the yep. map, it's going to feel pretty rough for Ivy. They're going to be feeling a bit shaken up by this track. Yeah, this particular area to fight in had all the same advantages of the high ground. Because the kill was on Zeus, who has boots of travel, his buyback is still effective. That high ground to low ground disengage there from Gork was excellent, because Pablo even still had 4 stab at that point. So they had no way for Pass 6 5 to chase there. And great stomp again from Zip Zapper. You know, he's been doing great stomps all game, but this time he's got the backup ready because of Gork's repositioning during the engagement. Tons of damage coming out, and they couldn't clean up Gork right away because of this evasion. You know, obviously Drow, she doesn't want you anywhere nearby anyway because of her marksmanship, but that ability to get a second chance at life because of the evasion was everything that they needed there. And it is going to be a fast roast spawn, but it's not fast enough uh, for Team Ball to get a, a free one off of this. But hopefully they can get some good vision around the pit. As you can see, they've got some on the, like, the south side of the river, a little bit up above on the pillar. They are prepping, the radiant are scanning as Bengen just runs around in I circles mean, in here. They just picked up this DD rune here on Gorg. I mean, Ro Roche is going to be up now. Oh, they, they buddy. They do it pretty quickly. Oh, buddy. It's an eggs. Oh, that, I mean, there you go. If they can get Weeha? this one, oh, they'll be very spot. happy. They're already using the kisses here to try and scare Team Bolt away from the pit, but that, well, that's the kisses used now. Okay, okay. So something less for Team Bold to worry about. They're going to go for the aggressive smoke here, Team Bold. They know if they can take this next fight and take the Roche, they're going to be back in an, in an even game. And if anything, they'll have the advantage. If they can get oh, one more fight dude. underneath them. Oh, this looks scary. Keeps going to jump. You know he's jumping. It's not going to come in time, though. He's not. Team Bold, they get the Roche out. They get everything from it. Ags for Gorg. Cheese, it'll be grabbed by Bangham for now. I'll pass it over to probably uh, you know, one of the cores. We'll see who takes it. But uh, there we go, Aegis on Gorg, a free Aghanims. Things are really starting to look up for, for Team Bold in this game too. There's only a 1k gold difference within it. And if you consider how much it. of a lead Ivy had, yeah, this is Team Bold in, in the driving. So, you know, they're the ones in control now, Trent. Uh, I would say so. I mean, the one thing that could turn it would be a Blink Scythe for Mobe, but he, he went a different path. He ended up not going for it. So that, uh, that is really going to help them. As uh, Weeha, of course, was working on the Agnims, has fully purchased it as yep. well. So we have double Ags upgrades complete. And Gork is just, oh my god, he is going to do so much damage now. If they can consistently save him in these fights and get that spacing. Absolutely. I mean, to the point where, you know, with the amount of farm that Gorg has and the fact that he has this, this free Aghanims, uh, that it's not even going to be bad if Weeha dies at the front line. If Weeha dying means Gorg's able to kick out damage from the side of the fight, then it, it's still very likely to end in a positive fashion, 14 bold. I guess we do have to consider there's still four and a half minutes of no buyback, though, on Weeha. Uh, that is certainly the crux of what could throw this game into turmoil for them. Losing Weeha, he's such a big part of their defense. It does still have the potential for the 
the assembling of the Eondus. Something that I guess he, I think he had that early, but I guess just didn't quite manage to do it in that last time where he got jumped and committed with the buyback. Yeah. Uh, so he still has that at least for the next fight. Uh, if he's able to, to focus on getting that put together, if he gets tempted to, if they attempt to jump him. And look at Gork, he fully just buys the Silver Edge. Buys out, says, I got I got Aegis, we're fighting for All the one right. fight. Okay. My Zeus isn't coming back. I mean, I like it living on the edge a bit, because indeed, if somehow they find Gorg alone and, and they kill him twice, it it could feel kind of bad that there's no buyback available. Uh, but, 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 you know, we like to see the games put on the edge. <laughs> well, we yeah, we do. Teammates, maybe not so much, but obviously they're down. They know what Gork's about here. He still has that Grove Bow as well, so very happy Drow player in this game. Absolutely, especially compared to the feelings he must have been having in game one. Even though it was, <laughs> as we saw, I would have a bit of a giggle about it. But uh, it would not have been uh, fun in, in a Dota sense, playing the Sniper in that game one. Perhaps the worst part is that somehow this game will actually feel worse if you lose, you know? Because like, you, you've brought it back to this true. point. Yeah, We're on even footing again. If anything, they, they will have an edge. It's absolutely, yeah. it's absolutely. If you, if, oh, yeah, if, you, if you're losing a stomp, you know, it's kind of... Oh! 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 Oh, oh, oh there's Hammer! Now will get the jump on him first. They jump the tiny, and of course, cute with this Octarine brush, he's, he's not really got anything to save himself once they get on top of him and that sort of control. So that's cute out for 70. Jeez, those mid waves are so terrifying. You know, everyone just tries to get their gank around it. Everyone's just lurking in the tree lines next to it. You're never quite sure how much of the team is there. Tombstone committed here. Oh, yeah, we'll see how, how good Ivy's high ground defense is. Definitely not as scary as, as Team Bold's was. I mean, the best potential does come from Cube. Maybe getting, a, getting in and getting some sort of toss back onto one of the cores, getting them deep into the base of Ivy. Uh, but he's down, as we say, still for 30 seconds, so a lot of room for, for Team Bolt to, to just continue this push here. And force out the fortification, but I uh, still think they're not going to be too scared of backing off. I mean, Pyro 65 setting up for some sort of jump. Look at that pressure top at the same time, too. I mean, they're going to get a Tier 3 tower very likely here. Uh, yeah, but all, all in all, Team Bolt in this game, that's the first team to take a, a barracks. Honestly, waiting out your tiny and getting a tier three, I'm gonna call that a pretty good win there for Ivy. Like that's ages cheese that you don't have to fight into, and you actually get something out of it. I can also understand uh, Team Ball giving up though, right? Because they don't want to like, separate the squad right now. They want to stay at full power right now, ensure they get the, the full rack. So, okay. Whoa, good toss back. Right, he's able to grab him off the cliff there. Looks towards Banger, but Banger won't manage to survive that, and Cube Hill with the one die. Now Team Ball, they'll look to push him for more. Pablo. He's going to turn towards Pyre 65, Pyre 65 committing him with the BKP, but Gorg's just doing too much physical damage to the CK, he's able to take him oh, down, Pablo. double kill for Gorg. He has been caught in the Sprout for now, 14 seconds still left on the Aegis, so he doesn't mind getting burnt through the once hit. As that's the Aegis gone, it was about to leave his hands anyway, so pretty much perfect time to lose it. Pyre 65 is coming with the buyback though, they want to continue to play aggressive now that they take the Aegis out of the Drow's hands, and they'll succeed in doing so, they take Gorg out. They'll look to chase down Zips out, but we are on the high ground. We'll be able to avoid the stun with the Yule Scepter. They'll go for a TP out. They've got anything to put an end to it. They do. Cubes in with the toss combo. That's we are out of the game for two minutes. Four heroes dead on Team Bold. Ivy aggressively using their buybacks here from both Cube and Pyro 65. They'll be ready to run it down mid. Pablo's going to be back up in 20 seconds. And they do have the buyback potential on their other cores. It's just we are no Zeus here for the hundred second defense, and obviously we are the Zeus. Please, he's one of the the, the bigger problems is when they come to the high ground push, Ivy, and he he's not something here they have to worry about. So a huge amount no. of chance. His buyback is now up though. It just come back. He, so he, he will, and he in fact uses it straight away along with Zip Zap. Gorg will hold on to his. Uh, still very very much a tense moment. If Ivy are able to kill one of these cores now. It very much could be game, or at least a, a couple of sets of racks. They are obviously a little cautious themselves with their own buyback status, so they will pull back. That's an interesting choice, too, to uh, let's go for the buyback on Weeha. Uh, I think that's the right call. I think I'd rather use Weeha's buyback than Drow's buyback. So on the one hand, like, Weeha's buyback has boosted travel, global potential, in case you're, like, pushing or, you know, active somewhere on the map, as we saw before, it sort of helps save that fight. 
but Gork is probably the more likely one that they're going to try and chain stun down and just go for the kill because you've got like the the jumps, the uh, the Yule Scepter, you've got uh, the Aeon Disc, so E Blade, you know. We got already pretty annoying, even without buyback. So go for it. I mean, this is, yeah. When you haven't got these buybacks, the game gets pretty spooky. One minute until we see when Roshan's back up. But uh, we'll very much likely be in be back in the game at a point where both teams have to really consider the buyback availability of each side. Owned me also has that nullifier complete. He's worked on that one for a long time, and that, that's a huge part of what they've been doing right on the side of Team Bald, is these, these four staff plays, just trying to uh, separate and, and disengage the fight utilizing that. So good choice here from Own Me to, uh, to try and dispel that and keep it as a, uh, a tool that they can't utilize as easily. See so what they can get with this smoke. Team Bald deep into Ivy's half of the map. Same to be said for Ivy. See who gets the wraparound on who. This could be a very, very deadly fight for one of these two teams. Ward. If they have their eyes on Omi, they're able to get him with the jump. They're able to jump him before he's able to get the chunk with the BKB. Oh, the toss back, that might just save him. Omi's still alive there. Shoot, Gork goes in. Hey, and in fact, Gork's able to take him down. The TP out from Omi will not be successful. Gork able to make sure that they can punish that. He's getting run down by Mobile, but Gorg, he's got a fair bit of backup by his side. Pablo, Weeha, and Zipzap are ready to try and help keep Gorg safe, and they'll manage to do so. Gorg's able to step out to the side. It's Mobile now who's pretty much on his own, deep in enemy territory. Zipzap finishes him off with a double edge. It's three dead on Ivy. Team Bald take the fight and keep Gorg alive. Pablo, he's even looking for more. He's going to be able to chase JM up into towards the, the Roche pit. He's going to need a bit of backup if he wants to burst through this snap fire. Zip Zap and we are on their way over. Quick cookie over there. The walls of the Roshan pit should be enough to save JM. He gets away. Uh, there we have uh, Team Bald taking the fight. And, and Gorg, they, they just can't deal with him this game. He, he's able to live. That was insane. <laughs> As the drow chasing down that kill right there is so scary. But, you know, he's the one with buyback, and he gets in there with the BKB up on the uh, the nature's problem. Barely surviving. He was down like the double digits there. He got so low. It was a beautiful attempted to tossback save that from Cube uh, flexing off the, the tiny skills that he has. But not enough there is... Absolutely. Your streamer, look, ladies and gentlemen, he chases them down. Look at this save again. It's pretty insane. He still had sort of two attacks chasing him down. It just wasn't enough to kill him off immediately. But yeah, Gorg, he wasn't having any of that. Just he's drifted, dude. Through. He's like, I'm, I'm getting this kill. And he does. And yeah, Mobite at this point, you know, very, very strong on the Death Prophet, but not quite strong enough to deal with four heroes from Team Bold on his own. Well, the four staffs not just used defensively. Have him there for the chase down, but they're gonna get another roach. Shit. They certainly are spawned pretty Who's early. This axe? Give oh, come on now. Oh, come on, Zip Zapper. Oh, no, oh, he did. Oh, no, this oh, no. Could, no, but you've got to be <laughs> careful with good. these. Oh, no, Why'd you do it, guys. Don't you got? <laughs> oh, no, we'll be careful. Why, Pablo? Why not? Like, surely. Oh, that's you. Imagine, yeah, imagine having Pablo on your team on his Rubik and you don't let him take his agonims. Give it a mags to play with. Oh my goodness. How, how far that axe has fallen, apparently, that we, we're taking Centaur over. That seems crazy to me. Oh, let's have a look. Maybe we'll see some, some pretty cool rides coming out here from Zip Zapper. Radiance top tower. I mean, it is really good versus CK, right? Because he has no way of targeting you, I guess. Like, that his illusions can't hit you. Radiance yeah, you're just in the cart. Yeah, they're not, he's not going to be able to sort of focus in with a rift or, or anything to, to grab you in. Which, uh, yeah, could be a, a decent answer, especially because he's got the talent right that, yeah, pierces spell immunity. So BKB won't save you from being rifted, but... Centaur hitching you a ride, that may just protect you. Stop him from uh, being able to surround you. Oh, I'd love to see it pay off. The trades have been pretty good. I mean, they have an Aegis Prophet on their team, so that always helps. Between the Treant spam and everything, it, it can uh, enable you to get better trades than most games. So despite being in a uh, disadvantageous position, they're still able to get some, some good moves here. And of course, all these little knockdowns here from Ivy just mean when you get that one chance, you know, if you get the big punish on a buyback or something, you can really turn and burn down these lanes. 
Look how far back Ongi's playing. He is way out away for his team. I don't want anything to do with what's going on over there. Here comes the high ground push. Team ball, three minutes on the ages for We Are. Cheese D -D in the hands Drow. of Gorg. I mean, the tombstone's down. It's hard to contest. And, I mean, theoretically, they can also, you know, go base right now. You know, they've gotten the top tier three. Look at this wave pushing down bottom. That's a lot of creeps. And they go. Mymo's going to try and start it. They'll use the Stampy different Zip Zapper to attempt to separate from the Death Prophet for now. As Mobile has to back off with his BKB coming to an end. Pyre 65 trying to step in to get some sort of grab onto to someone from Team Pop, but he cannot close the gap. They'll only get Zip Zapper from this. Uh, really want to get more from it. As the smoke's there as they attempt to chase down Team Bob, but Team Bob a bit too quick with their retreat. Ivy, they won't yeah. get anything more, uh, at least oh yet. I mean, they're trying oh, to, TP to close off the gap. Maybe they can find some of the support. They look towards Bangan. They'll take it down low, but the damage here from Gorgon, we they just shred through Ivy. They've lost the DP, the Tiny, and the Snapfire. They're going to maybe lose Omi as well. Yeah, Gorg's got the physical. To take him out, four dead on Ivy. They've even got the setup here for more. The Yule setup coming into play, catching up Pyre 65. It is a team wipe here by Team Bold as they take everybody down. They're so desperate for the chase down and just trying to like, cut chase. someone off. Yeah, and like TPing ahead there from Own Me. He goes towards the tree line, throws out a sprout. They're trying to catch heroes that are TPing uh, alone as individuals to try and pick apart Team Bold, but instead they just move as a unit and they were surrounding. Gork. So uh, when they're on the outside like that, Gork just turns, and he was like three shot. Though I mean, you, you saw it. The the splinters of these arrows are just taking apart everyone. Right net. Still ages on Weeha for a full minute. Gork still holding onto the cheese there. They're gonna continue this on to the tier fours. They've taken down one. They'll look for the second. Three buybacks being forced out here on Ivy. They'll happily back off Team Ball, wait for Zip Zappa to get back in play. They know the next fight, they get any of these what? Four members of Ivy now. I'll just use that buyback. This next seven minutes for Ivy, it's, it's pretty terrifying. If they step you know, the wrong foot forward and get taken down, it's going to be game over for them. It has been a back and forth game here. That is for sure, as you can see up top there. A nice comeback here from Team Bald. And the scythe that was rumored many, many moons ago here from Obe finally is complete. As that courier will make the brave journey home. And perhaps that is something that can get them an edge in this team fight. But uh, the age is expiring soon. Everyone's back up. No mistakes allowed. If you're on the Radiant, unless you're Cube, he can buy back. That's it. And one Centaur to hitch some rides. No, we didn't get to see if we, He's not managed to use it yet, right? I don't think so, no. Look at Pablo's inventory. Look at this man saving up for an Agnums. Like a pleb. He does have the gold for it now. With buyback. Looks like his courier. Oh, he didn't buy it yet. It's definitely seeming just increasingly hard to see any sort of way that Ivy can get the win in this one. This really does feel like it's it's moments away from Team Bob being able to close this one up. Here we go. Smoke from both sides. Could very much be the final fight. They're going for the fight with no Bengen there. So you guys the jump on who? There's the Stampede, they're in onto Mobile, but Mobile's quick with a hex. hex, turns with a hex onto the Centaur. Meanwhile in the river though, Cube's in trouble, he'll fall, he is the one with the buyback. They see Ivy, they're just right, they're completely Gork. closing in on this Drought. They're doing everything the they ride. can to get on top of Gorg. He gets caught in the Sprout, Stun's going to be thrown his way as well. He's caught by this the, the lockdown, but the damage now from Weeha just is too much for Ivy to survive through. Three dead without buyback, it, it's going to be game over. And there it is, GG is called Team Bold.
after a very, very rough game one. They were able to step into this game two, turn this game around after a bit of a tough start once again. And a Woo, look at Mega, big stretch there. Oh yeah, easy game, he says. Oh, very well done by Team Bald. That was looking like a dangerous game. And Ivy, you know, they respected the high ground defense of Team Bald. We knew that it was there. And uh, Team Bald, they, they were very patient. You know, that, that's a hard game to win. And that one fight where they turned it around by their ancients, they played that masterfully. Just just separating Gork there. Uh, I do think there was probably some issues in terms of like how Ivy paced this game. I do think they had to be a little bit faster in terms of like some of those earlier objectives. Uh, and it feels bad, but sometimes you just gotta take that risk uh, of jumping high ground, right? Like you gotta you gotta send in cube, send in Pio 65, because at a certain point the items were just too much from the Drow and the Zeus. And uh, hey, we got to see the centaur actually do something with the eggs for once. That was pretty cool right at the end. I did, he did. They managed to get it off yeah. for there. There we go. Yeah, 